modeling a waveguide in ABEC 3. Um, I'm going to give you guys a walkthrough of my minimalist setup um, and kind of just give you an overview of this software, help you get oriented. Um, and I'm going to try to keep this as short as I can. Um, I just think it'll really help if you can get a visual walkthrough of the program um, so you know where to start and everything. Um, so the first thing you need to do when you open ABEC is click project and uh, start a new project. Um, and when you're new new, it's really helpful to go into the example projects and just open those and click around inside of them and open the scripts and uh, see the way that they write their example projects. Um, but when you want to write your own project, you click new project. I'll just name it new project. Um, and what that does is it opens all of these tabs in um, the project section here. Um, so what this is is just sections that you can add scripts to and you do not need to use all of them thankfully. Uh, in fact I'm only going to use three of these sections. I'm going to use the boundary element script um, I'm going to write an observation script and I'm going to put my mesh file in here. And that's all you need to make this thing run for simulating waveguides. Um, now if you're simulating a waveguide for not a compression driver but like a dome tweeter, um, you're probably going to want to actually input all the parameters of the dome tweeter so that's when you'd get into the lumped element script but I won't cover that here let's just start assuming a flat wave front um, for compressed drivers uh, and that'll be a good starting place so if you right click on boundary element script or you double click on it um, it'll allow you to add a file and you're going to write these scripts just in text files. So I used um, the notepad on my computer as the default text writer. Um, so that's how these text files are written. And I'll open one that I've already written. And I'm just going to open it up and show you what's inside. So the first thing in the boundary element script you need to write is the control solver section. Um, so in here, you're going to write the frequencies that you want to solve for. Um, so I'm starting at 500 and I chose to just input every frequency I wanted it to solve at. Um, and then it's just going to draw straight lines in between each of these frequencies. And I'll show you what I mean. Um, so on this graph you can see it. Um, this big dip here. Uh, here's a frequency it solved. Here's a frequency solved and it just drew a line in between them. Uh, there's more information than what we're seeing here, so I could add more frequencies in between here and get a better picture of what's going on uh, with these dips and peaks uh, if I wanted to. Um, so there are other options for inputting frequencies. Uh, you can stick a logarithmic scale in there with a start and an end frequency, which is what most people do. Um, so you'd see that on the ABEC thread, the German thread. Um, I think they usually use that version. And in all the example files, I think they use that way of doing it too. I have specific reasons for doing this way. Um, I'm saving a bit of solving time by only looking at things that I want to look at right now. Uh, the next thing you need to type in is mesh frequency. Um, so this is telling ABEC what it needs to remesh or in your mesh file um, what it's doing is it's looking at how long whoops, all these lines are and if it's not long enough of a line for the frequency you're solving at it's going to add more triangles inside your triangles. Um, so because I'm kind of figuring that out for myself with my mesh program um, I don't want ABEC to remesh what I've already done, so I'm kind of bypassing that. Um, so that's why I have that set to zero, because I'm not using ABEC's mesh program. Dimensions equal 3D, 
and symmetry equals xy. That's allowing me to use a quarter model of my waveguide uh, to save solving time. Otherwise, this would take really long with the waveguides that I'm using. The next thing you need to do is define your mesh file that you're going to put in. Um, so you type mesh file properties, name it, whatever you want to name it. Uh, and then you're going to write mesh file alias. That is how ABAC and ACABAC actually um, keep track of what um, mesh file you're referring to um, when you're adding different pieces of your mesh file um, to the program. So you need to type that in, and I'm calling it M1, uh, the mesh file I'm using. I have a couple of options added here, rotate and shift, just so I can move my mesh file around. Uh, you don't have to have those if you have your mesh file oriented correctly from the get-go. Uh, but you do have to have scale added in here. Um, and it's set to one millimeter. If I had this set to one without units, everything would be wrong. So it's really important you have your correct scale um, set in there with the correct units. Uh, then I've defined subdomains, which is just areas of air. Um, so I've got subdomain one uh, as the inside of my horn, um, and then subdomain two as the air outside of the horn. So two subdomains. And then I can start adding elements. Um, so you type elements, whatever you want to name it, doesn't matter. Um, you type in what subdomain that element is in. Uh, notice the capitalization, that's really important. If you don't capitalize every single word, uh, these scripts aren't going to work. It's not going to recognize what you're saying. Um, I'm referencing the mesh file I'm using. Again, mesh file alias M1. Um, and here I'm telling it what part of that mesh file it's using. So uh, when I wrote this mesh, or when I meshed in Gmesh, um, I used the surface tool um, to label the different surfaces and group them together. Um, so you can see I labeled this one CD. Um, it automatically assigns numbers to all the surfaces. Um, so you could also just go in and type in the numbers of the surfaces um, and you just separate them using commas so like one two three four would be all my surfaces for the horn and then you wouldn't have to type in the names and um, add the tags is what ABEC calls them uh, when you add names to things like that so then I added my compression driver. Again, it's in subdomain one inside the waveguide. Um, and then I added an interface. It's assigned to subdomain one and two. So it's exchanging uh, the air between the two places or something like that. And then I added an infinite baffle and that's what that looks like. You can also, um, use the shift command um, and you can use coordinates to uh, move that wherever you need to move it to. Um, I've got everything lined up right on the origin so I don't need to do that. Um, I've just got it set on the Z plane uh, is where I need mine. And infinite baffle or any baffle is set to uh, the exterior subdomain, which I have labeled as subdomain two. The last thing in here, and yes, we finally made it to the end, uh, is the driving portion. So you just write driving ref elements and uh, CD1. So that's telling it that I'm talking about this element here. Um, and then drive group equals 1001. So that's telling it that this portion I called CD is making sound. That's it for your boundary section. Um, let's add an observation script. Um, and I'll just add a spectrum script here and show you what it looks like. 
So when you're outputting to Vax, um, you need to add a name and then an ID. Um, you can see this is headed by control spectrum. Uh, so that's how you start your spectrum script. Um, and then you can see how I've got uh, them set up here. So I've got a script for my horizontal directivity and then one for my vertical directivity. Um, and notice um, they're given an ID as well. Um, this one's 201, this one's 301. Uh, that's important for VAX um, just to um, sort out the different graphs that it's making. Um, I've got the planes assigned here and yada 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 you guys can literally copy down what I have written here make sure the planes are correct for how you have your your model set up and you'll be good to go the last thing in this script is driving values um, and you can see it's linked to that compression driver uh, 101 drive group 1001 so that's referencing back to the boundary element script uh, and telling it where that driven portion is that's it for there. Um, you could also add a field if you wanted to visually see what's going on later, uh, but let's just do the spectrum for this example. Um, I'm going to add my mesh file now. Now that everything's defined, um, and it'll ask you what the mesh file alias is. Um, I was using M1 in my script, so that's what I'm going to type here. It's going to do some loading. Now if I click the drawing tab, you can see I have my waveguide. Uh, I defined all the subdomains uh, and the elements that needed to be there, so now it shows up. If I didn't add the um, elements and everything in the actual boundary element script, um, then it would not show up here even though I added my mesh file here. Um, just so you know, you have to define everything in the boundary element script for it to show up. Now on the right section here you can see I can toggle through everything I'm looking at. Uh, so if I wanted to just see my original mesh file I could click on this uh, and it would show up there. Um, I could uncheck the symmetries. If I go, oh, I'll also show you normals. This is kind of helpful. Um, if you need to figure out which way face uh, different surfaces are facing, you can check the normals button and you can uh, draw this bar out here and it'll draw lines sticking out of whatever way things are facing. Um, if I go to the elements section, I'll see all my elements listed here and I can turn off different ones. Oops, let's turn off the normals again. Uh, so now I can see my waveguide without that um, obnoxious looking interface setup. Oh yeah, infinite baffle. Just making sure I had the right uh, waveguide loaded here. Uh, and then if you had nodes which are just points plotted in 3D space, uh, those would show up here. That's pretty much it. At this point you're ready to hit the solve button. Um, and then once it solves the boundary element, uh, you can use this button to uh, solve your observation spectrum, which will output it to the VAX program here trying to think if I missed anything important but I think that's pretty much it so hopefully this gives you guys a place to start okay there was one more thing I forgot um, the help section is awesome and everybody online always is talking about how awesome it is uh, but for a long time for me there's so much in here that I didn't really know how to use it um, so I just want to give an overview of that as well um, it's laid out so that you have all of the different sections, the BEM, LEM, direct sound observations. Uh, then it's got a huge appendix of all sorts of stuff. Uh, but 
For instance, I'm using the BEM section and the observation section. So if I open those, it tells you underneath that all of the things you can input into those scripts that it will understand and use. Um, and then it'll give you all the options within those of things you can write in there in your code. So like in the control solver, obviously you don't have to use all these different settings because I didn't, um, but it gives you every option you can possibly use. And if you click on those options, it'll give you more information and examples of how to use it. Um, and then it also has a search function. So if you know what you need but don't know where to find it, just type in a keyword or two uh, and it'll find it for you. So if you need an infinite baffle, um, you can type infinite and it'll pop up with a bunch of results in here. So super helpful. Uh, it's really good. Uh, it, they just did an awesome job putting this all together. Um, so. I think that's pretty much it now. Uh, thanks for watching guys and I hope this video is helpful for you.